Our next presenter creates large paintings that explore how we locate ourselves emotionally in the world. You might remember her Vancouver as a center of the world piece made famous during the Olympics. She has just won the Governor General's Award for Art. For years as an internationally recognized painter and as a professor of art at the Emily Carr University of Art and Design. She has inspired a generation of creative young people in their search for identity. Please welcome Landon McKenzie. They really put you on the spotlight here. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Lynn. So behind me is a selection of my works. Well, soon there will be. <laughs> I chose to really prepare something, but I really hope that you'll just watch the pictures. With this body of work behind me, which goes over the years you'll see on the screen, there's both big and small, not the real thing, but a facsimile. In most, I've used landscape as an organizing principle. So the privilege of seeing real work, of course, is very different. It's a one-to-one -one take in and reflect and put back. But some are the size of garage doors. Some are the size of two garage doors. Others just as small as a small placemat. Some took a year to make in a warehouse, and others a few minutes on a kitchen table. I figured out some time ago that painting is a good way for me to follow an impulse to make things and to use images to untangle my thoughts. But years ago, Facing a blank canvas was far too terrifying, and so I studied other things. Though I was trained as an artist, I am self-taught as a painter. I have a BFA from NESCAD in Halifax, an MFA from Concordia, before I started painting. And in the Montreal studio scene in the late 70s, that's when I started breaking the rules. I've been at it now for four decades, fumbling and stumbling and making up my rules as I go along. Our Canadian filmmaker, the artist Michael Snow, said, I make up the rules to my art, my game, and when I appear to be losing, I change the rules. I took that advice. And put the ambition in the work and the rest will follow. That too. Imitating something you covet is a good way to start. Also, one needs resistance, something to push against, and follow one's hunches. Art is fiction. It's an equivalent, not a fact. It's a parallel journey. It's a practice that runs alongside your ordinary life. How to process our contemporary complexity, to think for oneself while being critical and curious, and avoid the pitfalls of language, both written and spoken or how to layer ideas so that one idea is not more important than another. In a time where screen-based knowledge is always present, get off the screen and use your hands and intuition. Pay attention to yearnings, feelings, and worries. When you're on Great Northern Way, you'll soon see the big new Emily Carr University campus, where I chose all the colors for the exterior with my friend Ben Reeves, invited by the architects. My rationale is 15 colors from Emily Carr, the painter, her 20th century, early 20th century palette. The arrangement is intuitive, based on years of my experience, and easily the biggest paint job I've ever done to date. The art school has been like a patron for three decades, like a science position, I'm paid to be in the studio as well as in the classroom. I can experiment, reach for impractical possibilities, almost afford a studio. I used to be able to afford a studio. I still afford a studio, but you know, in Vancouver it's tough. <laughs> and those impossibly big stretchers, let's talk money. Through dialogue with colleagues and students here and around the world, I continually rehearse my capacity to see more clearly. It's important not to become isolated. Studio mates have been so key in my journey. 
I have even been part of group studios my whole career, first in Montreal and now here in Vancouver. Communal workspace, whether you are a writer or a web designer, can help share resources and provide con connectivity with a supportive community. And we all benefit from practical, emotional, and peer support. There's a performative side to making stuff. And it's even nice when others notice that you showed up to work. There is a time for solitude, and I've made many arrangements to have that. But the stereotype of the artist working alone in a garret is a very powerful image in our Western culture. And it's not all it's cracked up to be, and it doesn't work for everybody. Painting is also not a great tool for political clarity. You can't just stuff it with meaning, take the painting and fill it up. It's a template for the imagination of others, and I need to accept that. So here's the challenge. For example, my husband Donald is a leader in the push for more progressive drug policies in Canada and around the world, and through public health and human rights. Unless your head is in the sand, you know that our citizens are dying at a terrible rate, poisoned through a contaminated drug supply. So how as an artist can I compete with that? This is a real task for me, to understand the symbolic weight of another route, to untangle human experience and to negotiate complex ideas. Though we don't save a life through art, given an opportunity for profound experiences in a gallery, or on the street, it can touch people in profound ways and even change how difficult subjects are understood. When I received the Governor General's Award in Ottawa, our lovely Gigi, we call him the Gigi, David Johnson, spoke about perseverance and determination from Emily Carr in her time to all of us making art and design today. He recognized that it isn't easy to make the conditions for high-level creative lives, including financial and emotional, in order to steer our vision and material production over a long period of time. But it is amazing when you do get that call, acknowledging luck and perseverance and confirming that you are doing something right and a path forward. I'm just gonna let the slides finish up, run over you, Sometimes I think, actually, it's hard to see when you're talking. It's hard to hear and watch. So when you're in a gallery, if you're at the bag, just go look for one painting or one object or one image and just hand yourself over for a while and see what that experience is like. Just see where it takes you. You might not like it, but it may be just the challenge to take a deeper look a closer look, and maybe in the end come away with something unexpected, something that you weren't expecting to trip over at that moment. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>